Hello, welcome. We're in week six. So we've crossed the halfway point. Uh, I got uh, your grades out for the uh, markup assignment. And I think a lot of the time we've been speaking about that one um, thing that keeps coming to my mind is sort of revealing underneath the hood. Uh, you know, not that it makes a lot of sense, but it feels a little bit matrix-like. A lot of you haven't looked deeply at what constitutes uh, organization. So we're still very much in the world of being an information architect, not a coder, not a database administrator, but we are looking at data oriented display. So data is really the lifeblood of everything that we're going to put on a page. What the thought process I'd like you to, to embrace is the use of words. So last week we talked about very specific words like keywords or words that were part of a taxonomy to organize a, a large group of information. And while it might not have completely connected, we do go again very fast in this course. My hope is that by the end you're going to have enough knowledge about or awareness of these to uh, see it in some uh, other sites. So th that's where we're going to be in a couple of weeks, but we've got one more assignment and uh, this should hopefully make a little more sense because it's going to be a little more visual. So we're still talking about words, but this time it's words that are going to help a user find some of those records. So we're at one level higher. So just because we look here, we're, we just have basically gotten up to the middle here. And the markup that you've done is still extremely critical to this because the main consumer of any content online is not people, it's robots. And all the words that you use, the more unique they are and the more uh, hierarchy you can put in to help that uh, robot understand your content. So those headers are extremely important, what they mark up, any HTML that you use that's meaningful, such as nav is going to be the subject of this week but that's an html tag now nav anyway all it's going to do is really help someone find it but once humans get involved now they've got to be able to sort and filter it so that's the topic of this week and for the next two weeks we're going to work on both uh ways to to communicate that structure so uh that's going to be this week understanding how different types of navigation work. So these are some different types I want you to explore, find examples of those. Looks like we've already got uh, someone working hard to get those out there, very well done. Uh, I think that's Stephanie, right? Let's see, hold on. Yeah, perfect, good job, Stephanie. Uh, so we've got these and the goal is to find examples, each of you, so that you can share and you, we don't all have to unpack all of those different examples. Uh, there's also some ideas here about what is navigation, if you want to understand how that works. And uh, as I said, they're different from taxonomy. Taxonomy is the words that describe the record itself. This describes all records and how do you get around. And at this point, hey, there we go. We've also got a example of a sitemap. And so this is what we're looking for. How, a sitemap is, is basically shorthand just to show how things are roughly organized and how people can find things. This is, by the way, if you haven't been following my perfume ingredient finder, let me tell you what um, I've been going through as an example. So these are the words, this is the taxonomy of how smells can be categorized. They have specific words such as woods, orientals, mossy. These are words that come out of the study or the classification of scents. But, so as I do a, a, a uh, navigation, I could say, well, you could navigate these uh, by the smell. What is the word for the smell? Also, you have other attributes and your thing might have attributes as well. It's like uh, new is an interesting attribute. That could be interesting to some, like what are the newest records that you have? Uh, in this case, there's a big thing about smells, whether they're uh, natural or man-made. Uh, and of course, they all have like chemical names. So here's three ways to organize my records. They all are the same records, but these are three different ways to get at it depending upon the user goal. So as we are working over the next few weeks, we're going to be actually designing out that uh, experience. And uh, But this is the first step. How do you get around? And it's going to be a three-week thing. So please look at and read the assignment 
uh, uh, over here if you want to I'll just find it for you uh, one thing I'm also really interested in you making sure you understand the rubric because I grade on particular uh, principles that I want you to focus on so I don't want you to get too far away from that um, and reading this is uh, it's it's written very carefully <laughs> so even though it's a little bit long this is also we're going to start into uh, soon using a new tool called Figma if you haven't used Figma before it's pretty easy to pick up it's a drawing program that's online uh, but really it's just there you can also do this on a piece of paper there isn't any particular reason to get involved in drawing programs if that's something that you don't uh, use a lot but we will at some uh, point be wireframing and storyboarding which uh, it's nice to have a program to do that it's a little bit easier but these are the things I look for uh, make sure that you understand them just so there's no uh, confusion and again uh, welcome to week six